Open world games are some of the most popular in the world. Some people are getting tired of them, but others absolutely love them for multiple reasons. The exploration factor, the insane amount of content that can be shoved into the game, repetitive or not, if it's done right. An open world game can be one of the most immersive experiences video games have to offer. Now, there's been some absolute bangers released just this year alone. What is up, everybody? Chaos here today. We are going over 10 of the best open world games that have been released in 2022. So you let me know which of these is your favorite, drop a like, make sure you have those subs turned on with the bell ringing, and at number 10, Dying Light 2, Stay Human. Dying Light was a surprise hit when it launched all the way back almost eight years ago, that's insane. It mixed parkour, open world gameplay with zombies and crafting to make, make something unique. The sequel was delayed a number of times, it finally dropped in early 2022, and some people were disappointed with the final product. Now, I think it's a great open world game on its own. It's much more of a story-driven RPG than its predecessor, but the gameplay, it's been expanded upon. New combat, new parkour mechanics. The story isn't anything to write home about, which is a tad disappointing after the developers hyped it up, but the gameplay, the gameplay, if that's what you're here for, it's an awesome open-world zombie game. It delivers with flying colors. Fans of the original will love it. Those who never played the original won't be left behind thanks to it being largely isolated in the story and the themes. Give it a shot. Don't let the Twitter mob drive you away from this one. It's a good game. GTA 5, the next-gen version. This may be cheating, but GTA 5 is one of the most successful games of all time for a reason. Originally released in 2013 for the PS3 and the 360, it featured everything we wanted. Single-player campaign, incredible open world, jam-packed content, you know. Now Rockstar had an insane success on their hands from day one. They continued that money train with a PC port and then an 8th generation console port alongside the delayed launch of DTI Online, which remains one of the most popular multiplayer games in the world. In early 2022, Rockstar finally dropped their PS5 and Xbox Series X version of Grand Theft Auto V. Now, everybody's pretty much acquainted with the game, but this new version, it was impressive. Loading times were faster, the frame rate was smooth, the visuals were beautiful, it's absolutely packed with content. While I totally understand why people are annoyed with the number of ports and updates it's gotten, I don't see the issue. If Rockstar wants to keep supporting their game for almost a decade after launch, so be it. I mean, it's commitment, right? Monster Hunter Rise, the PC version. Monster Hunter is one of Capcom's babies, but they don't really release new entries very often. Monster Hunter Rise is the sixth mainline entry in the franchise. It dropped last year on the Switch, but in early 2022, it got the long-awaited PC port. Huge step up. It was. Like previous Monster Hunter games, Rise featured a number of open maps, extremely deep gameplay mechanics, and I guess you could argue that it's not a traditional open-world game, but I'm going to put it on the list because it features a lot of the same mechanics and it's worth playing. Open-world game fans will still get addicted rather quickly. Just about everything from Monster Hunter World was expanded upon. And the PC version features a number of huge upgrades from the Switch original, including frame rates better, better graphics, less technical issues. It's a really good uh, action RPG. It is. If you missed it in 2021 because it was on the Switch, now's your chance to give it a go. Postal 4. I'm not kidding. Postal is a franchise you either love or hate. And even if you love it, you probably hate certain aspects of it. Postal 2, we all know. It's still the most famous entry in the series because of the over-the-top humor and the extreme violence. But... The game is legitimately fun, and while Postal 3 was a complete piece of garbage, 4? It's actually a much more enjoyable piece of garbage. By no means is Postal 4 a well-crafted game, but it is fun. And in its defense, nobody really expected it to be amazing. The whole appeal of Postal is it's so bad it's good. I mean, and Postal 4 is certainly doing its best to, to be entertainingly bad, it, but it's legitimately fun and worth giving a try. You run around, complete random tasks, basically do whatever you want to various NPCs with ridiculous weapons and over-the-top gore effects. If you like Postal 2, you're going to like Postal 4. No, it's not amazing, and no, it's not a game of the year. But it's the perfect kind of bad that will keep you playing for hours, and at the end of the day, that's got to be worth something. Pokemon Legends. Now released in January of this year, somewhat of an experimental entry in the franchise. It got somewhat mixed reviews. You can let me know what you think about it if you're part of the Pokemon fan base, but it's worth playing. The game is an appropriate evolution of the tried and true formula. Features a large open world, lots of random Pokemon encounters, but with much more engaging moment-to-moment -moment gameplay and more modern open world design. Now, many people compared the open world of it to Monster Hunter and Breath of the Wild. I can see that. It's not perfect, but it's interesting as an experiment. I hope the developers continue with it. Everybody's imagined what the classic top-down Pokemon games would be in a proper third-person open world gameplay, and here it is. Fans of the franchise will get a kick out of it. I honestly think it's a good introduction to the series for a modern gamer. 
Now we get into the top five. Horizon Forbidden West. Now, Zero Dawn was one of the most successful new IPs in gaming history, sold tens of millions of copies on the PS4 alone before being ported to the PC. Now, West dropped on the PS4 and the PS5 early this year, and while the world seems to have completely forgot about it, I don't get it. You explore a post-apocalyptic version of the western United States, specifically California, Nevada, and Utah. The map is much bigger from the last game. The combat mechanics are smoother and deeper. Now, the story may not be quite as impactful as what came before it, but the game plays top tier. And if you're looking for a great open world game for your PS5 that will absolutely satisfy, this is it. Horizon Forbidden West is a great game for people who are new to open world genres, or you just want some beautiful eye candy while you run around and fight robotic dinosaurs. At number four. Cyberpunk 2077, the next, genera- er, next generation, the next gen version. Now, Cyberpunk is going to be fighting an uphill battle for a long time on the market, but it's doing a good job. It's totally redeeming itself. The original version, we know. Disaster, bugs, everything, controversy, doesn't matter. It's over, right? It's in the past. Since then, CD Projekt Red has done their best to keep moving forward, and after countless updates and an official port to the new consoles, it's more or less the game we were promised on day one. I know, that's sad dystopian first-person RPG. You play as a mercenary trying to get to the bottom of the state of their city and the various gangs that control it. The story is engaging. The gameplay is addicting. No, it's not as good as CD Projekt Red's previous work on The Witcher 3, but if you're looking for an addicting FPS RPG with some very beautiful visuals and interesting themes, it's worth another shot. I know, a lot of people passed on it because of the launch, but the game's in a good place now, and the PS5 and Xbox Series X versions dropped earlier this year. At number three, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, released in July of 2022 for the Switch. Open world action RPG features a massive map to explore, engaging party system. It takes place in a world with two warring factions. You play as a group of friends trying to find a peaceful resolution while also learning more about the world they live in and the history of the conflict in the world itself. It's deep. The story's interesting. The gameplay is great, but the main draw is the insane open world. It is huge. Just running around the map can burn hours to days itself, but it never feels too big, which is a pitfall a lot of modern open world games fall into. Many consider Xenoblade Chronicles 3 to be the best in the franchise. I'll let you guys decide. Smooth combat, excellent story. It's probably going to get a port to PC or PlayStation, I'm sure. The game, uh, I mean, the game deserves to be played with the best graphics and smoothest frame rates possible, but if you're a Switch gamer and you're looking for a new open world RPG, you owe it to yourself to give it a try. At number two, Marvel Spider-Man PC version. Now, the OG released in 2018, developed by Insomniac Games. We all know the legacy, right? One of the greatest superhero games ever made. He played as Peter, faces off against a massive roster of iconic villains, swings around a beautiful recreation of New York City. The swinging mechanics are arguably the best of any Spider-Man game ever. Combat, it's great. It feels like Batman Arkham. The amount of unlockable suits, I mean, everything you can do in this, it was crazy. In August of 2022, the long-awaited PC port was released, and it's by far and away the best experience for the game. Higher frame rates, ultra-wide monitor support, some absolutely incredible mods at your disposal. This is the ultimate Spider-Man experience, and it should be played absolutely by everybody, especially with the sequel reportedly coming next year. It's one of the best-selling games of 2022, despite being four years old, which should tell you just how good this PC port is. And at number one today, the best open world game of 2022 has to be, hands down, Elden Ring. Come on, it took the world by storm, perfectly translating the gameplay loop of Dark Souls to an open world format while also telling a compelling story accompanied by an absolutely gorgeous world. From Software has been on one giant winning streak. Ever since they released the original Dark Souls, and Elden Ring is going to be hard to follow. Combat? It's a tough, of course, but it's addicting. The world's huge. The lack of objective markers and traditional open world gameplay elements make it feel a lot more personal and engaging. Elden Ring was critically acclaimed at launch, for good reason. Like I said, the gameplay is basically the perfect escalation of Dark Souls, and the open world map is the gold standard for modern gaming right now. I have no clue how From Software is going to follow this up, but I'm eager to see what they do next. Rumor is, they're working on an Armored Core reboot, but hopefully they get that Bloodborne PC port out first. But if you haven't played Elden Ring, you need to. And there you have it. Let me know one open world game that launched and dropped this year that didn't make the list, but it should have, and I'll see you soon.